Hi folks, there's a, another Stephen Cocker knife. This one is in the traditional Barlow pattern, or is it? We we we, we'll, we can talk about that. Uh, it's what he calls a Barlow pattern. So in many ways, that's good enough for me, certainly for now. Um, obviously, it's in stag. It's in a stainless steel, which is slightly unusual. And I think it's called something SL27, but I, I, it's not a steel I recognise the name of. I don't know anything about it, and I can't imagine it's more, much more high-tech than um, 420HC or something similar. But it is a stainless steel, which I quite like, because I quite like to use my knives as um, fruit knives, and I don't like patina. Somebody's gone to a lot of trouble to shine that up, and I want to keep one. Stephen Cocker has gone to a lot of trouble to shine that up, and I want to keep it shiny. Um, what's slightly different about this to um, maybe a traditional, well, to many people's idea of a traditional Barlow is, although the, the handle is broader towards the bottom and narrower towards the uh, bolster, there is a sort of curve in this handle rather than it being a straightforward um, sort of uh, teardrop shape. So a more symmetrical teardrop shape. Uh, to be honest, I don't think many Barlows really are a teardrop shape, except perhaps some of the, the Boca ones are. Uh, in terms of, but it, the other big thing that usually determines whether it's a, a, a Barlow or not is the big, is the larger bolster. This doesn't have a larger bolster. So does that mean it's not a, not a, a, a Barlow knife? Yeah, well, I, couldn't really say for certain. I, um, I know that um, Michael May, for example, uses quite short uh, bolsters, and you know he got his patterns from Trevor Ablett. So um, you know there's a heritage there, which is difficult to argue with. Um, equ um, but you know Taylor's eyewitness use really quite a, a long. Uh, bolster and, and I think that's probably more what one would sort of consider a, a, a Barlow perhaps to look like with more of the teardrop shape although this does actually have a sort of um, hollow curve on this side and more of a convex curve on the on the other side um, but you know if they go for a, a longer bolster uh, Arthur Wright who, in many ways, I suppose you could say a relatively new maker. They were only set up in 1947. Um, but um, uh, they use a relatively short bolster as well, but not as short as uh, Stephen has used in this. But we could argue the semantics all day. At the end of the day, whatever, whether that's a Barlow or whether it's not a Barlow, it's still a beautiful pocket knife. Um, you know, even if you want to just call it a jackknife, it doesn't really matter. The stag on it is lovely, really nice, sort of um, sort of popcorn stag, and it matches up nicely with the other side. Because one of the nice things about a small maker like this is that, um, you know, because he's only making a very small number of knives. Uh, I mean, this was made to order, and it took an inordinately long time to come. Um, the first knife I got from him came within a month. This one and another one took about seven months to come, but I think it was worth waiting for. The price-wise, it was it, it was pretty it was pretty good, um, but build quality-wise and for the materials, just the way he sort of matched up that stag and put together a knife that's nicely balanced uh, in the hand, and not just two random pieces of stag, which you know sometimes you can find them markedly different one side to the other. Um, you know, it's the same with um, Taylor's Eyewitness don't really do stag. They only do it to special order and you kind of have to supply them with the, the the stag. But, you know, they put two lovely bits on that knife. I mean, this knife is probably the best stag knife I've ever seen, ever. Um, it's just phenomenal. But, but this is also a very, very good knife and considerably cheaper. Um, you know, I got this knife and another knife from Stephen Cocker for the same price I, I paid for that one. So, you know, quite a difference. Um, Arthur Wright's stag tends to be very plain and pedestrian. And I suppose it kind of matches as a result. Um, but it's it doesn't have the drama that uh, Stephen 
Cockers has. Lovely polished blade, lovely polished bolster, really nice fitting um, backspring and so forth. Um, it's just a beautiful little knife. It's on a, um, a cam tang, so there's no half stops on it. Um, somebody once said to me that half stops are a mark of of, of quality, and I, I just think that's not true. Um, some very high quality knives don't have um, don't have half stops, and then some very poor quality or cheap knives do. What I would say about the Stephen Cocker knives is, particularly for a Sheffield knife, they have a, a relatively um, light action. I mean, I think that's fine for a pocket knife, but it's not um, it's not the the bear trap that you would get with um, Taylor's Eyewitness or even, I mean, um, uh, Arthur Wright tend to do real nail breakers, particularly when they knew they took a bit of breaking in. Uh, this knife was perfect just out of the box. Just for a quick size comparison, there it is alongside the 93 millimeter um, Swiss Army knife. You can see it's uh, very slightly smaller than the uh, Swiss Army knife. Um, going back to Taylor's Eyewitness, it's very slightly smaller than Taylor's Eyewitness as well, but they tend to be quite chunky. And uh, again, with the Arthur Wright, it's, very, it's, a little bit, it's quite a bit smaller than the Arthur Wright. That's really quite a chunky knife, actually. And my standard size comparison, comparator, the Enzo PK70, which is my favourite EDC knife. It's quite a bit smaller than that. And the the Enzo, of course, also has S35 or S30V um, blade steel. So, you know, it's a really good everyday knife. It holds its edge for, for a long, long time. But anyway, that's the Stephen Cocker uh, Stag, Barlow and Stag with a stainless steel blade. I really, really like this knife. I think it's a very, very nice um, knife to look at, but it's also a very, very nice knife to use. It's not a nail breaker, so it's relatively easy to open and shut. And that is quite nice when you're um, out and about in the world, not um, breaking your thumbnails every time you want to open the knife. Anyway, if you like this stuff, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of it, then um, please uh, subscribe. We're going to see a number of different things over the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.